My name is Eric Honeyford, and uh, boy, for the first 10 years of my life, I lived in the estate in Bestbrook. Uh, the Richardsons had a family home in the Woodhouse, uh, which uh, uh, is now uh, an apartment. But in those days, Mrs. Williams, uh, Miss Anne Richardson, her sister, and Mr. John Richardson, the managing director in Bestbrook, uh, lived uh, with, the, with the maids and all, had their own quarters and all there in the Woodhouse. There was, uh, there was the cook, Madge. There was two worked in the kitchen. And then there was other maids, uh, plus uh, I can't, I think it was Miss Smith or Smith, who was the nurse who was there for Mr. Williams and uh, for Miss Anne Richardson. So uh, there was been the other cleaners as well. Uh, in the estate, there was a head gardener, which was called Thomas, Mr. Thomas. Uh, as far as I remember. And uh, there was Sandy Kilbreath and Jack Lockhart, who were the two gardeners who had done all the lawn mowing and all. And then Fred would, uh, and another young fellow, I can't remember his name. Uh, Fred would have been the one that would have went round when they would, uh, wanted a lot of stuff moved when they brought the horse and cart over. There was two big uh, yards the car here was at one, with a shelter over the other end, which had the, uh, this uh, bogey, or whatever you call it, horse driven carriage, uh, which uh, it lay there. They never used it after they assumed the car. Fred would have taken the, a trap, would have taken Madge to Dury to do the shopping, usually on a Thursday which was market day. My mother was a dressmaker, tailoress, and uh, she used to uh, be up in the house with Mrs. Williams and Miss Anne Richardson, and uh, would have did, made clothes for them, or even made alterations to their clothes. So that's when I was very much up in the house, and that is, where I come across the chamber's car. Uh, Mrs. Williams, uh, the owner, uh, used to uh, send the maids down to our house when she would be going out at odd time in the summer, very odd times, uh, for a short drive. And uh, my mother would have got me cleaned up and up to go for a drive in it. Uh, Fred, who drove the car, actually was formerly a jockey and had uh, uh, come to the, look after the cows and the, uh, in the estate. Uh, they, uh, they had three or four cows and they also had a horse and the cart and the trap. Uh, and, uh, also, they had all the guy, the head, all that would be capped up in a loft to be run down, and uh, he would have looked after the heads and all that. But he would have taken the car only out in the summer. I used to go very often to friends and see the the horse and all, and he would be milking the cows, and then would he, he would have been good polishing the car polishing the bonnet and the headlamps and the, round the handles of the door with the, something like a brasso or something like that he used to use. And I can remember him ha having to help me to lift me up into it whenever I was uh, being taken for the drive. We never went very far. Uh, Fred Irvin, the driver, was a very, very nervous. But occasionally when they wanted to go out, he would have driven the car. 
to my knowledge, I don't think he ever changed gear. And, uh, but uh, Mrs. Williams' sister, who would have come with us, was uh, very delicate. So I think my, uh, from memory, my journeys went very, very far. I think we went the length of Kamla Lake and on time and back again. It had a very loud exhaust noise. And we, uh, I used to sit in the front with Fred and he was so nervous, he said, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. This door doesn't open right, uh-huh. right with the spare wheel. Yep. Yep. Uh, you might have found that. Uh-huh. So he had to get in the passage and come come across. Uh, but uh, he would have lifted me in, uh, uh, helped me in, and, and uh, he would have crossed across the, the, st- uh, the steering wheel. In the chamber's car, you'll probably see the, there's a dividing screen between the driver and the uh, passengers. That was because the driver's and the passenger's side uh, is open. And, uh, of course, uh, the, the passengers in the back were shielded. But uh, that, I think, if I can remember, is a slide, uh, sliding. And uh, Mrs. Williams would have reached forward and slid it and said, Fred, I think we will go back home now. When I was a very young boy, I would have been going to the car, would have been in the 1930, 31, way back then, when I was uh, six or seven year old. My father was a head electrician of the Richardson Sons and Odin Group, uh, which was a big, big factory in Bestbrook. And uh, they had also one down at Melville, and then I was on the way to Newry. And uh, then the other one was in Lurgan, and the finishing department was in Belfast. But he would have uh, had to look after all of that, and also the Richardson's estates. Uh, the interesting thing about the spinning room was uh, the, the workers worked in their sp- bare feet they, uh, because their shoes would have rotted, apparently. There was duck boards along the, the spinning frames. My father would have been in there with, at night with the electricians. Whenever the, with the heat and, and the humidity, I mean, the floor was kept wet in the spinning. And, uh, oh, you went through that door, <sighs> took the breath off you. Uh, that was even at night. Uh, when they would, after a certain time, they would have had to change the wiring. The, the old rubber that they used to use in the insulation would have broken down. The material was finished off in Murray Street in Belfast, turned into tablecloths uh, and all sheets and things like that, and all packaged there for export. It uh, did linen that could have been uh, used for the fabric for uh, the like of uh, some of the hurricanes and some of the bombers. I, th- I can't remember, but some of it would have been used for that. Uh, it all went uh, to uh, Belfast, uh, the huge big uh, looms of it, rolls of it. And uh, latterly it was all converted into uh, like tablecloths, bed linen, anything of that nature. Mr. Brad Faulkner's uh, father called in with me one day and I don't know how it came about but during the conversation uh, Bestbrook must have been mentioned and he said oh yes I travelled uh, to Brazil and all for uh, for the Bestbrook Spin Company and the Richardsons.
Well, the tram we have here, I have photographs of it as it was originally. And as my father was the head electrician of the company, he was also responsible for the electrics on the tramway and the, the, the different motors, uh, which he remember him talking about the said the said the electricians over the when something went wrong with it and say they kept that motor going with a candle wax, bits of string and bits of wire. But that was only used really laterally for it to take the workers out of jury, the three trams would have went. But because of the amount of current in the line, they had to space themselves out. Uh, this one would only be used to take the workers down from Newry to Bestbrook in the morning and from Bestbrook to Newry at night. The, uh, the tram here uh, that ran, it ran on the rails, but outside of that, a central rail which was electrified. Uh, the outer rail was a wee flat rail which was about a, about uh, did sir, but more below the level of the other line, on the outside of it. This was to uh, accommodate the uh, wagons, who were flat wheeled, uh, for towing across the road and into the factory. And at the other end, the jury to tack, to tow them over to the railway station. The inner la the rail then was used as a flange for the wagons that were uh, towed behind it. There is another wee uh, photograph I have, I think it's on the computer of a wee uh, trailer they had, it's a wee small trailer. They used to put that on behind the wagons. I think it was a sort of uh, help to keep, uh, keep them on the rails for the, they had the habit of jumping the rail, which I remember very well being in the tram very many times when it happened. And the conductor and the driver had to get out and get a big, a uh, six foot metal pole which they put in and jacked the wagon back onto the wheels, onto the rails again. The Richardson family uh, were members of the Friends Society. They, they uh, no, possibly known as Quakers, uh, who uh, everybody regarded as equal. So uh, we were talking to Mrs. Williams, she just said Edith, or uh, John for, uh, and as a young boy, uh, before we got the car in 1935, uh, Mr. Richardson, John Richardson would uh, come down to our house and uh, maybe on a Friday afternoon or evening after work, and he would have said uh, to my father, there's the keys of my car. Uh, take the children away for a drive on Saturday. Uh, I remember very well that this car was a Rover with sports wheels and uh, sport mud guards on it and an awful rip which uh, used to embarrass my mother terribly. Uh, 